next presenting company will be after him and with us we have CEO Mikael Lindstam. Welcome Mikael. Thank you so much. Nice to be here. Well, I'm the CEO of Aptahem and I'm here today to tell you a little about Aptahem. But for you newcomers, I will give you a brief uh, uh, about Aptahem and then a little where we are and of the latest findings and also round off with a bit of the future. So hang on. So Aptahem, the mission of Aptahem is to develop aptamer based drugs, especially for the treatment of life treating dis diseases. APTA-1 is our lead candidate and it's being uh, developed towards acute uh, application and in this case to prevent the damage of organs and tissues in sepsis patients. This is a very big job and very interesting to do. APTAMERS, which I just mentioned, is a fantastic group of different uh, drug candidates that we can manufacture and uh, APTAMERS are so unique that when you work with them, you can build them from DNA or RNA fragments. And these fragments can be looked upon like Lego pieces or actually pieces of a puzzle. So you can match and mix them into a unique target and work on that. And after one is an RNA aptamer. And the uniqueness, I just went into that, is that we could manufacture interesting aptamers or drug uh, aptamers for targets that you have not been able to really reach or approach so far, meaning we could actually approach totally new treatments for sicknesses that doesn't have a solution today. So that's a fantastic ability with Aptamers. If we then go back to uh, our lead candidate, Apta1, we see here that we have, including with its brothers and sisters, a multifunctional portfolio. And especially that we can apply it to several different inflammatory diseases. And we're working towards sepsis, which is a syndrome sickness. Um, what else about APTA1? Well, it has brothers and sisters that I said. And if you look down there, you see we have APTA1, APTA2, and APTA3, sisters and brothers. We don't know much about them today in the case of what we're doing here, but we have touched a little with APTA2 in the inflammatory uh, department. And we see that it looks very much like APTA1. So the future holds interesting pipelines for us, and also that we could open up when we have the economy and the people to do this. But we're looking forward to do things like that. And lately we have further uh, pinpointed our novel mechanism for APTA1. And now we have so much that we can go down to molecular level and see that APTA1 hinders thrombin from activate, activating PAR receptors. And this is a fantastic finding. And it activates these PAR receptors on a very, very narrow part. And I will come back to that in a few slides. And by this, uh, uh, hindrance, we can see that we can cause a rapid anti-inflammatory and anticoagulant or anti-thrombotic effect more correctly. And this is the key to how good APTA1 is working in the sepsis conditions or sepsis-like conditions that we have tested so far. Uh, if we go on to next here, APTA1 again, I will not go into much, it's a take-home message here. And because we can uh, bind to so much specific targets or subtle targets as I mentioned here, results in a lot of different advantages. And if we look at the two most important things here that I just mentioned, the novel mechanism that we have for this uh, thrombin inhibitor is that it doesn't resemble the typical thrombin inhibitor that you have in the clinic. And this is the uniqueness of APTA1. And the specific one is that it doesn't cause bleeding effect. Fantastic. And there are some other, of course, advantages too. But I'll come back to them in the second point here. When it interacts with the coagulation factor in the thrombin, then we see also that the hemostatic functions remain unaffected. And that is the key here with APTA1. It lets the coagulation system just move on, but it's pinpoint one part that actually is the villain behind triggering the inflammatory and the hemostatic uh, mechanism in the body. Fantastic. I've been talking about anti-inflammatory and anticoagulant, and we have some more effects. If we look at the picture to the right, this is how we define APTA1 today. It has two legs. One leg is the modulation of thrombin. I've been talking about that. And we have the two first ones of blood coagulation and hyperinflammation to inhibit this. We also have a very important part. It's called promote uh, uh, the reparation of tissue. And this is, for sepsis, extremely important. Because when you're struck by sepsis, you can have a hyperinflammatory response and the body reacts very strangely so much that it starts to leak from the vascular system. So blood leaks out 
from the vessels. That means you lose blood pressure, you lose oxygen, and in the end, it can be so bad that the organ dies due to oxygen deficiency. And this is a other and third very important part about APTA1. If you look at the right leg, you see that we also influence or induces a stimulation of pen pentaraxine 3 I have always tough to say this word. Anyway, we stimulate this more than 10 times than the body usually can do. And this is the second secret sauce recipe. And it also stimulates the same parts that I've talked about, the modulation of thrombin, but with an added fact. We identify, it identifies and it eliminates pathogens. So pathogens are virus, fungi, uh, bacteria, which is the most common in sepsis. We are still working on looking how to define this and find more evidence for this part, but so far it's very interesting what we have seen to uh, together with the uh, collaborators. Anyway, if we just take a look at the whole picture here, APTA1 modulates, modulates inborn immune response. What does it mean, inborn? Well, it's the body's own immune system that are under supervision of APTA1. APTA1 is a management consultant of big range. It goes in, tells what to do, supports, stimulates, modulates, and something happens. So it doesn't add anything more than just good advice for the body to regain the balance of the body system, the immune system. A fantastic feature. And what better to use it into a sepsis syndrome? Absolutely not. Much good it is. Anyway, so I'm talking about the novel mechanism and the pinpointing with it. This is a little visualization of what we are doing right now or what we have seen together with the collaboration with Urber University. We have up one coming from below up to the heparin binding site. This is, I mean, the thrombin is a coagulation factor and it, it contains a lot of different sites. And one of those sites are called the heparin binding site. And after one goes into a part of this heparin binding site, just a little one, I've been very narrow, I told you before. And this is enough to stop that, the activation of PAR receptors. And here's the secret sauce recipe again. This is what happens is that we stop the body system to tickle inflammatory responses in coagulation or hemostasis. And what happens when we don't? Well, we have, and in this case with APTA1, a very rapid anti-inflammatory and anti-thrombotic effect. It's a fantastic thing. And that's been done in collaboration with Urebrew, uh, which have been stellar in this way. And we're still doing more. This is one mechanism. There are more, and we're looking into those as more. But this is a very important one, the, which explains APTA1's uh, fantastic effect. And effect we have, and why are we doing that? The sepsis, I talked about this, and I talked about the vessels opening, and you lose oxygen in your organs, meaning your organs are in threat to die, actually. And if you don't die and you survive, you can still have an aftermath of brain damage in case of cognitive problems. You need to maybe replace your kidneys or something like that. So it's nothing to play with. So the faster you put in a, a remedy, or a therapeutic to take care of a, a septic condition, the better for the patient, and of course for survival in the end. And of course, as you see, there's a lot of people on the right side that are struck by sepsis every year, and the cost associated is, is enormous. And uh, this is not the full cost, of course, because the socioeconomic costs are even bigger sometimes, and the personal suffering, we should remember that. But there is a market potential. And with that, well, it's not only us doing this, there are others working on on uh, solutions to, to fight against sepsis. And uh, if you look here, that's maybe not too many out there, but still, we are not alone. That means there is a need to do this, and others have realized that as well as we. And we're now gaining towards phase one, so I hope to put a two on phase one <laughs> there uh, when we come into after the summer next year, if we keep the schedule. And just to say something else about Aplamers and our feel is that recently, last year, they approved an Aplamer drug in, the, uh, in Europe. And uh, that is very important because as soon the regulators have taken them to them and the national offices uh, dealing with regulatory, uh, then they open up doors for an understanding and a positiveness towards this type of drugs. It's very novel drug uh, uh, chemistry or, or area where, where aptamers are in, so we should remember that. But the more it's done, the easier it will be at least to convince the fantastic properties of aptamers. And just to mention uh, something here before I, I go on, is that what we see with apta one it's o is that it offers a very wide, if not totally, uh, covering uh, uh, therapeutic effect on the sepsis syndrome. 
And that is something that uh, we see from all our studies that we have done. Uh, so, but of course, there are many others out there that say, that, okay, we do that too, but so far we haven't seen that. But that keeps us moving on and working hard with that, that one. And um, yeah, we talk about market potential. We talked about people working on this to find solutions. And here's an evidence for the potential market. It's multi-billion US dollars at stake. And uh, of course, if you look at uh, this part here, down here, market share of patients treated with immunomodulatory drugs, that is where we are. And if you look at the figures for Europe, one third, US one tenth, and 40% in Japan, that means there's an even bigger market potential ahead of us because the focus right now is in that part. And here is what APTA1 also uh, is, is um, uh, in position, so to say. And so with all this potential market and so forth, we need partners because going to market costs billions of US dollars. And there we are. So we can't do it ourselves, that's for sure. Uh, we wish we could, but there's money and expertise that need to come in from a partnering. And if we look at this, we need to protect our uh, product. If we don't protect it, no one will take it because who will invest billions of dollars and then someone else do it and take the market. So this is a very important thing to have patent protection. And we have two patent families. One is on the free structures. And, and those are fully granted. And then we have patent family two for APTA one, that is a therapeutic use patent. And there we already have a granted patent in the United States and in Europe, and we are validating Europe now. And we are also looking, as you see here on the map, several other heavy uh, states for, for market and developing uh, APTA one further. So if we go on to the collaborations, well, because we are not here today by our own uh, speed, Others have been part of our success, and here we have three now that we are working with currently in Örebro in the middle, I've already mentioned. They've been stellar in, in looking at uh, this particular um, uh, modulation and, and, and mechanism that we have right now. Seattle Children's Research working with um, real sepsis models and also pathogens. Uh, University Health Network in Canada are working on lung models, virus-induced lung models, that means Corona, SARS and others. So we're looking at other, other pathogens and to see how that uh, goes. And we are having quite nice results from there, but we are still waiting for final reports to, to um, really claim what we are saying here. And Erebro, I mentioned before, very good and very important for us, all of these in our uh, work for uh, bringing up that one, not even scientifically, but also into the regulatory and clinic. It's very important for us to have this. And uh, here's the team at Aptahem, some of them are elite management team. Um, most of you have seen them before and I will not say so much uh, about them, but uh, you can look more on the homepage. But we are a small team, semi-virtual semi company, and uh, we're working a lot with third-party providers, a very good ones. So there we are. And just to round off, I promised a little outlook, and here we are. We are ready to go into clinic 2022 after the summer, as it looks now. And what we communicated so far, we are staying on plan. And if you look at the outline timeline uh, there, we see that we are still having some work to do. It's regulatory, it's manufactured on GMP material for the company and to go into clinic. And phase one, you see it's a longer stretch because we're also planning a challenged uh, uh, study in uh, healthy individuals uh, to see uh, an early response, how APTA1 works under a stimulated uh, inflammatory response. And if you look at the deal and partnerships, uh, wide stretch there is because we are constantly working with this. And there are, of course, inflection points now as after phase one and specifically after phase two, which is a proof of concept in man. And I also shadowed a little uh, the part of phase two. We are not there yet and it's very preliminary, but I just want to show you where we are heading. And during this time, we also would like to find a partner. We're working hard on that. But phase one ready, you see the timeline, we have communicated and we are moving towards there. Anyway, we are starting to get really ready for phase one. We're working hard on partnering and we are also working on the scientific presence. And I just mentioned it a few minutes ago that this is very important for us to support the regulatory clinic, but also show that we are a force to count on when it comes to the science we are, are developing here and, and the product. It's very important to have that. And there's no better than to have a publication out there. And we're working hard with our collaborators to put them out there now. It's massive amount of, of, uh, 
of um, results we have take a long time to, to assemble, you know, but we are doing that and it's a validation, as I said, uh, out there that, that we are seeking from that. But we have a fantastic result. But, but that, I will stop talking and uh, say thank you so much for your attention and uh, see you soon and bye. Thank you for your presentation. Um, and recently you had a development breakthrough in the collaboration with Otterbro University. Uh, what are the possible regulatory and partnering implications of this? Well, I, I mean, this, it's about the definition. I mean, we have defined even more down and as we have communicated on a molecular level of where we are today. And I mean, we, we see what we, we see that uh, it affects the whole system, but without affecting the cell. So affecting just a key important mechanism that is responsible for triggering inflammatory and hemostatic reactions. So we actually hinders that and we can actually turn around and, and have an anti uh, thrombotic and an anti inflammatory response. And that's fantastic. And recently today I, I come from a meeting here a few hours ago and, and we uh, was shown even more uh, uh, results and uh, new results that even s m even more strengthen what we have said here today. Fantastic results. So we are now getting so much results so we are splitting perhaps up them in more uh, uh, um, potential uh, scientific publications. It's uh, such a massive amount of, of results and they are p all pointing in the same direction, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a really, really nice collaboration with Herbo. And regulatory, of course, to define the mechanism for a partnering possibility, of course, you're always asked this. And that's a, a very important to have with you. So now we have it. We knew it from all, all the studies we've done, but we couldn't put the finger on where it was until now. And you're now approaching your biggest milestone, uh, clinical studies with APTA1. Um, what medical void do you intend to fill with this candidate? Well, yeah, it's a <laughs> slam dunk kind of. Yeah, the void is that uh, sepsis is the biggest killer in the world. We know this and it's also called the silent killer because you can come into the hospital and be dead uh, half an hour later. And, and a lot of other sicknesses are triggering sepsis like pneumonia and we have seen COVID of course and so forth. So uh, it's a huge void and it has had no real treatment options since they began uh, focusing on this, this area because it's such a multi processed uh, uh, functional uh, syndrome. We don't say sickness because there's a lot of different things happen. Um, so that's what we're targeting here. And uh, what are the most important uh, steps for Aptahem in the short and medium term going forward? Well, going forward, yeah, I just uh, presented here that we are looking at, at putting together the, the, the full bag of, of needed information and, and, and data and so forth for the regulatories to be able to go into first in man studies here. And, and um, we're putting a lot of focus there, but in general, we, we kind of close the preclinic for the regulatory to go in to, to, to clinic here, but we're still doing work, but it's to add and, and support. And the talks we're waiting for now will be the final of the preclinic. And then we are looking at the, the regulatory part in a way of, of uh, how you formulate and how you argue for your product, of course, very important. So that's what we're doing now. And I'm also negotiating with the uh, providers for performing the clinic study at the moment. So uh, it's full speed and, and uh, we need to have this clear and I have some really good candidates. Looking forward to present them uh, at a, a time point when we are done with that. Yeah, and we look forward to follow this and uh, thank you for coming here. Thank you so much, my pleasure.